Rises from indenture freed, strong his arm and keen his senses. He's a pirate now indeed. Here's the number to friendly famishes, friendly fix up to his indentures. Two and twenty now he's rising, and alone he's fit to fly, which were bent on signalizing with unusual revelry. Here's the number to friendly famishes, friendly fix up to his indentures. From today, you rank as a full-blown member of our band. Hurrah! My friends, I thank you all from my heart for your kindly wishes. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? 
Today I am out of my indentures, and today I leave you forever. But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a cunada or cutting out a piano never shipped a handspike. Yes, I have done my best for you. And why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error, no matter. The mistake was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd apprentice him to some career seafaring. I was a lassie, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind a promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing, mistaking my instructions which within my brain degenerate. I took and bound his promising boy apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make and to doom him to a Lot. I bound him to a pirate, you, instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your Shylot, which you wouldn't have found had he been bound, apprentice to a pilot. <laughs> Rise, sweet one. I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were. They still are, though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, pity me, my beloved friends. For such is my sense of duty, that, once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Poor lad! Poor lad! <laughs> well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only half past eleven, and you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True. 
And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Yeah, yeah. Well then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. Mm -hmm. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course! We are orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he is an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. But hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless? There's my difficulty. Until twelve o'clock I would. After twelve, I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what is to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old. And yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible I may be mistaken. True. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, Plain. Oh, Ruth is very well, very well indeed. Oh, yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you really think so? I do. Then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her, and in consideration for you, I will leave her behind. No, Frederick, this must not be. We are rough men who lead a rough life, but we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will! By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king! Oh, better far to live and die Under the brave black flag I fly Than play your sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart Way to the cheating world to go ill, where pirates all are well to do. But I'll be true to the song I sing and live and die a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king, for I am a pirate king. You are, you are a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is to love the pirate king, to love the pirate king. Sally forth to seek my prey. I felt myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, is true, than a well-bred monarch ought to do. But 
been your king on a first-class throne. If he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through more dirty work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. I am a pirate king. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is for all the pirate king, for all the pirate king. Oh, take me with you. I cannot live if I am left behind. Ruth, I will be quite candid with you. You are very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see... You are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear master. Ah, but lately? No, oh, no, years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. Hmm. That is your candid opinion? Yes. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you for I'm sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if, I say, if you are really a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Hark, surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be Custom House? No, it does not sound like Custom House. Confusion. It is the voices of young girls. If he should see them, I am lost. By all that's marvellous! A bevy of beautiful maidens! Lost! Lost! How lost. lovely! How surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them! What grace! What delicacy! What refinement! And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful! <laughs> False one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master, am I not so? And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jot so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot so. Your face is lined, your hair is grey. It's gradually got so. Faithless woman to deceive me, I who trusted so. Master, master, do not leave me, heed me ere you go. Faithless woman. Master, master. Faithless woman. Master, master, Faithless do not woman, leave me, do not leave me. Leave me. Don't 
I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. Presently. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are, and we came over a rather difficult country. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone. 
Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings who ever set foot on this enchanting spot. Except the mermaids. It's the very place for mermaids. Who are only human beings down to the waist. And who can't be set strictly to set foot anywhere. Tails they may, but feet they cannot. But what shall we do until Papa and the servants arrive with the luncheon? We are quite alone, and the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes and stockings and paddle! Yes, 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 yes the very thing! <laughs> Stop, ladies, pray! <laughs> I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sir Speed? I am a pirate! A pirate? <laughs> Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end, O oh, pure and peerless maidens, O oh, blushing birds of ever-blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale!
Ah, yes, ah, yes, this is exceeding. 
bleeding gladness. Won't you put for your blue that's got the glass that's rising very high? I'm just a fine, I hope they play your music, bring your years and days to water with it, water. Can I hear the country once and then the people say, I don't know why the fish will have a warm to have to water with it, water. Can I hear the country once and then the people say, I don't know why the fish will have a warm to have to water with it, water. Did ever I have a throw his soul in guilty dreaming and wake to find that soul? Men who stick at no offenses will anon be here. Piracy, that dreadful trade is. Pray you get you hence, young ladies, while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If they stick at no offenses, we should not be here. Piracy, the dreadful trade is. Lies of guidance for young ladies. Let us dance. <laughs> From Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and theoretical. A proper number theorem I'm teeming with a lot of news. Lot of news. Ah. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and emulculus. In short, he meant as vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. He showed him as a vegetable, animal, and I know I'm mythic history, King Arthur's and Sagaradox. I answer hard to cross except for pretty taste for paradox. I quote in elegiacs all the crimes of Heliogapolis. In chronics, I can flow peculiarities for Rapalus. I can tell I'm Dominic Raphael from Gerda down the top of these. I know the crooked chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a few of which I've heard the music's dinner for. Dinner for? Of course. And whistle all the years from that infernal nonsense. Dinner for. I whistle all the years from that infernal nonsense. Dinner for. I whistle all the years from that infernal nonsense. Dinner for. I whistle all the years from that infernal nonsense. Dinner for. Then 
like and write a washing bill in Babylonic cuneiform and tell you every detail of correct because it's uniform. It's short in metal, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a model major general. <laughs> In fact, when I know what is meant by mamelon and ravelin, when I can tell at sight a mouser rifle from a javelin, when such affairs are sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, when I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I've a smattering of elemental strategy. Oh, yes, strategy. Strategy, matergy, ratergy. Ah, oh, I have it. You'll say a better major general has never sat at you. say a better major general has never sat at you. say a better major general has never sat at you. say a better major general has never sat at you. My military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventurous, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a bottom major general. <laughs> and now that I've introduced myself, I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, Papa, oh, we. Permit me. I'll explain in two words. We propose to marry your daughter. Dear me. Against our wills, Papa. Against our wills. Oh, but you mustn't do that. May I ask? This is a picturesque uniform, but I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. Yes, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Papa, don't believe them. They are pirates. The famous pirates of Penzance. The pirates of Penzance? I have often heard of them. All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today, and who means to lead a blameless life evermore. But wait a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. But we waive that point. We do not press it. We look over it. Ah, an idea. And you mean to say that you would deliberately rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age, and leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended? unprotected and alone. Well, yes, that's the idea. Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, crash it all! Here we are again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, orphan! Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan? Orphan? Orphan! I don't think we quite understand. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. As I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it. But not orphan. Stop! I think I see where we are getting confused. When you said orphan, did you mean orphan, a person who has lost his parents? Or orphan frequently? Oh, I beg pardon. I see what you mean. Uh, frequently. Ah, you said orphan frequently. No, only once. Exactly. You said orphan frequently only once. <gasps> Dark and dismal fate. Forgo your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy. An orphan boy. An orphan boy. are all that I can call my own. Poor fellow, take 
take them away from me, and I shall be indeed alone. Poor fellow, if pity you can feel, leave me my soul remaining joy. See at your feet they kneel, your hearts you cannot steal against the sad, sad tale of the lonely. <laughs> my glory, for they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters. If I hadn't an elegant diction, indulged in an innocent fiction, which is not in the same category of telling a regular terrible story. If he's telling a terrible story, we should try to get that his glory, as one of the two of his daughters never had been in these waters. It is easy an elegant diction to call it an innocent fiction, and it comes in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. It is easy an elegant diction to call it an innocent fiction. Oh. 
Oh, Frederick, cannot you, in the calm excellence of your wisdom, reconcile it with your conscience to say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel, but why does he sit night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? To escape from the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family of Scutron. But you forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought disgrace upon what I have no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and have married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all, did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself. At what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only wait my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lion-hearted be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. Bessie steel, tarantara, tarantara. We uncomfortable feel, tarantara. And we find the wisest thing, tarantara, tarantara, is to slap our chests and sing, tarantara. For when threatened with the mutes, tarantara, tarantara, and your heart is in your boots, tarantara. There is nothing brings it round like the trumpet's martial sound, like the trumpet's martial sound. Attentions are well meant. Ta -da, ta -da. Such expressions don't appear. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Calculated men to cheer. Ta -da, ta -da. Who are going to meet their fate in a highly nervous state? Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Still to us it's evident these attentions are well meant. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Go and do your Best endeavor, and before all things we serve, we will say farewell forever. Go to glory and pray. 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 Go to gl
Observe to great distress on the wrists that on us press, and of reference alike to our chance of coming back. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to carve or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Yes, it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Evident, yes, well meant. Evident, ah, yes, well meant. When the folk of sense of duty, stern dictation, I, circumstances, victim, have been guilty. Young Frederick, who calls your late commander, and I, your little Ruth, oh mad intruders, how dare ye face me? No, ye not a rash ones that I have doomed you to extermination. Have mercy on us. Heal us ere you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet mercy should alloy a stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. Say on. <laughs> <laughs> Try to raise our spirit's fate according to a custom old with quip and quip and quaint. But all in vain the quips we heard. We lay and sobbed upon the rocks until to somebody occurred a startling paradox. A paradox. A paradox. A most ingenious paradox. With quips and quibbles heard in flocks, but none to beat this paradox. <laughs> A paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> this paradox. <laughs> we knew your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer, and with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we've risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox, that paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We've quips and quibbles heard in flocks, but none to beat that paradox. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> that paradox. <laughs> Ridiculous reason to which, however, I've no desire.
desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the Astronomer Royal, has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, yes, with yours, my fingers do agree. <laughs> Quaint the ways of paradox. At common sense, she gaily mocks. Though counting in the usual way, yes, twenty-one, I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day. One, two, three, four. I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> Most absurdly whimsical. <laughs> Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. You are glad now I'll be bound that you spared us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you had killed two of your comrades. My comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Until I reached my 21st year. No. Until you reached your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you are as yet only five and a quarter. You don't mean to say you are going to hold me to that? No, we merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty? Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on. I follow. Oh, horror. What, what is, is the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no. I cannot do it. And yet, as one of your band... Speak out, I charge you, by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley, the father of my Mabel... Yes, yes. yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did. It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore, but as your apprentice I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley is no orphan. What? what? More than that, he never was one. Am I to understand? that to save his contemptible life he dared to practice on our credulous simplicity? Mm. Our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our band and attack Trimorden Castle this very night. But stay! Not a word! He is doomed! Away, away, at hearts of fire, I burn this base deception to repay. 
is very light. light. My vengeance dies, shall so so glut itself and go away, 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 away. Ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire. He strikes me to the core, away, away. With falsehood now, he tricked us on the blind. Vengeance out the pirates of the sides. A mate stern, he softened with his lines. And in return, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, I'm ready to borrow his girls likewise. They will wait in sorrow. A man's of sport. In the nature's a cherish. And all who plot to abuse it shall perish. Tonight he dies, he's not ready to borrow. His girls likewise, they will wait in sorrow. No man's of sport in their nature's they cherish. And all who plot to abuse it shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. Away, away, tonight. Oh, final love, 
1940 I of age shall be. I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. That's behind. Yet when the danger's near, we manage to appear as insensible to fear as anybody here, as anybody here. Sergeant, approach. Young Frederick was to have led you to death and glory. That is not a pleasant way of putting it. No matter. He will not so lead you, for he has allied himself once more with his old associates. He has acted shamefully. You speak falsely. You know nothing about it. He has acted nobly. He has acted nobly. Dearly as I loved him before, his heroic sacrifice to his sense of duty has endeared him to me tenfold. He has done his duty, I will do mine. Go ye and do yours. Right home. This is perplexing. We cannot understand it at all. Still, as he is actuated by a sense of duty. That makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter, our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should. It is too late now. Where 
when a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, Set enjoyment, is just as great as any honest man. Honest man, our feelings we with difficulty smother, difficulty smother, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, our take one consideration with another, with another, our policeman's lot is not a happy one. Constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burglar, not a burglar. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime, hide in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a good, brook a good, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the caster's finished jumping on his mother, on his mom. He loves to lie a basking in the sun. In the sun. I'll take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a nappy one. Uh, when constabulary duties to be done. To be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Hush, hush, I hear them on the manor poaching. With stealthy steps, the pirates are approaching. We are not coming for play, to roll the story. General Stanley took. We seek a penalty, fifty four, for General Stanley's story. They seek a penalty, fifty four, we seek a penalty, fifty four. They seek a penalty, fifty four, for General Stanley's story. They come in force with stealthy stride. Our obvious course is now to hide. <laughs> Take your soul and just 
General comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Tormented with the anguished dread of falsehood unatoned, I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache, no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. <laughs> No, all is still in Dale on Hill. My mind is set at ease. So still the sea, it must have been the sighing of the breeze. Softly to the river comes the loving breeze, setting nature all a quiver, rustling through the trees. Through the trees. And the brook, in rippling measure, laughs for very love, while the poplars in their pleasure wave. Oh, 
Summon your men and effect their capture. Frederick, save us! Beautiful Mabel, I would if I could, but I am not able. He's, He's telling the truth, he is not able. With base deceit, you worked upon our feelings. Revenge is sweet and flavors all our dealings. With courage rare and resolution manly, for death prepare unhappy General Stanley. Is he to die a shriveled enemy? Who spared him? Will no one in his cause a weapon win? Who spared him? Yes, we are here, so here's a true conceal. Advantage you've contrived, but your part triumph will not be long lived. Don't say you're orphans, for we know that game. On your allegiance, we've a strong acclaim. We charge you yield. We charge you yield. In Queen Victoria. You do, we do, we charge you here in Queen Victoria's name. We yield at once with heart. Statement. 
and hears Because with all our faults We love a house of peers I pray you pardon me, expired king Peers will be peers, and youth will have its fling. Resume your ranks and legislative duties, and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. 